Ha, there we go. There's Christian House. What's happening, man? Good to see you, Matt. So uh, you have been using Boss ME. You had the ME70 back in the day, and now you've got an ME80 as your as your main effects processor for all the crazy stuff that you're doing. Yeah, and and thank you because uh, you know, thank you for coming by my spot here in yeah. Asheville. If anybody ever has a chance to catch Matt when he's when he's on the road, especially if he's driving. <laughs> You will be very impressed because he will show up in your driveway with a car full of stuff and he'll show and, and, and me and Matt hung out when we did the podcast. And, uh, so if you ever get to go to Durham and visit the, you know, electric violin shop live, you're going to get that kind of treatment. You know, people are going to, it's not going to be like going into guitar center where they're like, Hey, could you turn down? <laughs> you know, you're going to have somebody like Matt. that's like just giving you all the love in the world, which was beautiful because I thought I, I thought I was good on gear, but then when you left, <laughs> I can, I didn't let you, you know, I, I picked up a couple things and one of them was the, was the ME 80, but I'm still using the ME seven. I guess it speaks to how cheap I am. I just haven't even used it like the, the 80 yet. I've got the 70 cause I know it, but it's basically the same. So ME 70, ME 80, whatever, you know? Um, and, uh, it's funny story. Zach Brock, who plays with snarky mm. puppy. I, I know, you know, him, probably a lot of listeners. Uh, way back when he came to one of my first workshops in like 2001, he introduced me to this pedal. And I've had the same one since I bought after after seeing what he was doing for 20 years, believe it or not. So, but yeah. And it's still working. Oh, man. I, yes. I mean, that's one of the reasons for this pedal, right? I mean, it's durable. It's And you don't not, I mean, I don't have a flight case. I have a garbage suitcase and I put it in and I go all over the world with this thing. And I like, I mean, I have walked around Beijing and Madrid and like London with my suitcase on the cobblestones with this ME70 in there. And it still works, you know, so it's very durable. And that is an advantage, I got to say. Yeah, if you show up to a gig and your gear isn't working, it doesn't matter how nice it sounds when it does work. Yeah, and I mean, I think, I'm, I'm guessing that the pedal's like maybe around $350, $400, I don't know. And I mean, that's pretty cheap considering that you're getting like, for me, I would say like a good delay, uh, a good dis couple distortion options. Uh, I've got my octave covered. I've got my upper octave. I've got a wah-wah if I ever want it, some tremolo and some other little gizmos if I ever need them. I mean, that's you're talking like I'm in a grand just to get those separate stomp boxes. At least, yeah. And so you're getting all of that with this one pedal. You don't need extra cables. It's durable. It's one thing. Now, is it? It's not as big as some pedals. Right. It's it's somewhat big. So that's a thing. But I mean, you don't need to get a board and all these things. So of course, for people that do that, great, good for you. But I mean, for me, this is just it's simple. I like simple. Like a lot of people think that, okay, you have your gear set a certain way and then you're good, right? But for me, I learned from being on the road a lot that every room is different. So even if you've got that preset or you've figured out like this is how I set my EQ or this, when you go to different rooms, small rooms, big rooms, you know, uh, whatever, different types of sounds in the rooms, then you need to start all over in that room every day, ideally. Ideally, you're, you've got a concert that night. And so it's like it's a fresh sound check in a fresh space. Mm -hmm. It's an environment. We don't play music in a vacuum. We play vi music always in some environment. And that whether that's your studio, whether it's your living room, those are totally different, your bathroom, but also the church that you go to sometimes and the other church that you go to sometimes. It's totally different spaces. But you the best, should I say uh, the biggest things that I use? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to hear what you're using. On the pedal mat or what do you all right, so I got my acoustic fiddle here with my pickup. So, one of the favorite things that I like is my octave. So I can get one octave here. I can get another octave here. That's fat, right? So I'm going to put it on my loop pedal here. I, I have no idea. I didn't think about what I was going to do, but... Um... something in G, right? So that's my loop. That's a fat bass sound. So so now I've got this this is so this is first of all since I like to use the loop pedal, this low this double octave below is huge to me. Right? This is huge to me. And also you guys might notice I'm just using a four string violin right here, right? And of course I I dig fives and sixes, but you know there's reasons to go four, reasons to go five. I'm good. Boom. Low end, covered, right, for my loops and stuff. So I'll just throw a little, uh, you know, 
something like this next in my loop. Now, so the next thing I'm going to use is my delay, just because for no reason, but just to show you why, like, delay is so important to me. So I just want you to hear how fat this delay sounds, right? Warm, fat. So I just love the delay. One of the tips I always give people about delay, the way I do it is I want my delay to be felt, not heard. So in this example, you're hearing even more of it than I normally would want you to. I want you to feel the fatness, mm -hmm. um, but not hear it. So um, what I recommend is make the delay a little bit longer than you think, but turn down the level. And that's what you're hearing here. Right? So that's actually what it sounds like dry. But if we put it with the rest of the stuff, you're not hearing it as much. I might even turn it down a little bit more. But let's make this some. Um, what I love about this delay, by the way, another thing. Oops, sorry. I'm going to do a swell. Now you got swells. Right? I mean, that's that's what's up. If I want, I can record that wall. I'll just throw down a little bit of it. One of my favorite things is the upper octave, and some people might uh, think I'm too indulgent for using this, but we're gonna we're gonna bring that in. You would only hear the upper octave if I was using a solid body. My solid body, I've got it here, but I'm not, I just didn't set it up. Everybody probably knows, but I use Yamaha. I love Yamaha. But if I was using this Yamaha, you wouldn't hear the original right. sound from my acoustic. You would just hear the upper octave. But I also like the blend. And if I really want to go crazy, I'll get my distortion going with the delay. Obviously, we can get some raw going with that if we want, you know. turn the wah off we can go back to that um that uh, octave and distortion and that's about all i've got so that's that's one of my favorite stuff delay Dude, that was so nasty oh thanks matt so what did I say? Delay, lower octave, upper octave, occasionally that distortion, occasionally the wah. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty much happy with my sounds. Uh, I didn't, and, and also, well, just, I should also say that just the clean sound, right? Just the clean sound itself. I use this pedal as a preamp, so I don't have a separate right. preamp. I don't, and I don't really even understand it, but I know that like having a preamp is valuable, but this works as a preamp for me. So anyway, I'm, I'm done speaking.